All right, y'all, Shalawan, we back, we back. We gonna go ahead and get started. All right. And I'm also gonna go into a lesson today about separation, right? Because I know your friends are saying we all need to be together. We need to work together. We're one big old family. I'm sure that's the narrative that you keep hearing. But the reality is, we tried that. But we'll get into it. As a matter of fact, we're gonna move this to the side right here. I'm gonna stand right. Lock it to my camera. All right. But shalom. I like to start out by saying, "Call hello, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai." That means all praises be unto Yahweh in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. My name is Haya L, and I'm back on the San Antonio River Walk with yet another lesson. Right? Today we're going to do a little uh, deviation to answer a few questions that Ernest has. Brothers over here. Right? You got time for the Bible today, sir? Have a good one, man. You as well, man. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to answer a few questions today that the brother has. We're going to start with this. In 2 Ezra, chapter 6. No, I believe it's, it's either 6 and 9 or 9 and 6. Right. Because we need to understand that we are at the very end. And then we're going to go to Revelations 11. I believe 11 and 18 after this. One second, but let me find it. Got time for five on this? That's it. Oh, it's uh, six and nine. Sorry about that. So we're going to go to second Ezra, six and nine, because we need to understand the times that we reside in right now, we're at the very, very end, right? All the prophecies of the Bible. Hell, not just the Bible, all the secondary books that have been written all over the earth that either plagiarized from the Bible or have been written after the Bible came. They are now saying the same things because it's obvious that we're at the end, right? The earth in her strength is waning. The people are drowning in their own sins. And now we're starting to see entire civilizations face destruction as they can't have enough children to replace their numbers, as their economies fall apart, we're seeing it all happen at the same time. And it lines up with the prophecies of the Bible. So we're going to go a little bit into it today. We're going to highlight who these heathen are. Right? Because we need to understand something. When the Hebrew Israelites say that they don't, they don't love God's enemies. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and use the H word. That we hate God's enemies. It's in accordance with the Bible. And I know this is a part of the Bible. That even some Israelites find hard to believe, they find hard to in internalize. I can help you find it. You got it? Second Ezra? Yeah, second Ezra and then uh, six and nine. Uh, right. Make sure white Jesus is visible here. Right? This is second Ezra, chapter six and verse nine. Sorry about that. Verse 6, I'm sorry, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So when it says that Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, what does world mean? We're going to go somewhere else in the Bible. We're going to go to Isaiah 45 and 17, because I need to show you that it doesn't mean the end of the earth. Say it should be in the Old Testament. Old Testament, yes, sir. All right. 
because again, with it being the end, what does that mean? People will tell you that the end means that Jesus is going to come back and then everybody's just going to have a good old time. You know what I'm saying? The righteous. And I put quotes, quotes around the righteous because they don't say the righteous are Israelites. They just say the righteous in general are going to suddenly be raptured. They're going to disappear and they're going to end up in heaven. But that's not what the Bible says, right? Let me know what you got. Uh, 45 and 17. Right? Because whenever we're answering questions, I like for anybody who might be listening as a student or just a listener in general to walk with me every step of the way if they're asking me to prove something. You got it? All right. Yes, sir. This is Isaiah chapter 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So I have a question. If Israel is that world without end, then what about everyone else? The Israelites as a group, as a nation of people, we constitute what you would call a world in the Bible. So what that tells you is the word world does not always mean the earth. Because in this case, world means the Israelites. And this is saying that Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Right? So we now know. How you doing, sister? All right? Remember, you special, all right? You a queen. Well, princess, right? You a princess, okay? You an Israelite, you special. Right? So we see that the end is going to come, and at the end, Esau is going to be in charge. Because Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. And then you see that Israel is a world unto itself. So what does it mean for Israel to take charge and take control of the earth? Let's go to Revelations 11 and 18. Because there's a few things that have to take place before the end is by and by, or here, right? You can say that. Because we have to understand that with the end being here, that means judgment. It's that time, right? It's the time of judgment. So, 11 and 18. It's a, it's a very particular time right now. Let's see what this says. This is Revelations 11 and 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the day, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So I have a question before I go on. Who destroyed the earth? Did the Israelites do it? No. Because how can you destroy things when you're in slavery? Since the white man has been in power since about the 1600s, right? You could argue he came into power in the 1500s, right? When he took over the Catholic Church. But he has been predominantly guiding everything on this planet. And as a result, everything is being destroyed. That water down there, that's destroyed. The air, you see all the chemtrails they spray in the air. Geoengineering, they even have a name for it after calling us crazy for decades, talking about the contrails in the air. Now they have a name for it, geoengineering. So they're destroying everything, but most of all, they destroy God's people, right? So with them having destroyed the earth and the time of judgment is here, what does that mean for them? Turn with me to Jeremiah 25, right? I'm going to throw a few quick ones at you because I want to start filling in the blanks about why I'm so hostile toward those who are not our people. And I want to show you that in order to walk this path... Jeremiah, is that old or new? Uh, old. Old Testament. It's uh, right after Isaiah. But I want to show you, brother, that to walk this path, it's going to cost you everything. Actually, you know what? Go to Jeremiah 20. I said 25, right? Yeah, okay. Because we're going to go to 30 after that. Now, 
now. You remember I mentioned earlier that all these different nations have had us in slavery, right? Not just the so-called Edomite or the white man, not just the Asian, the Japanese or Chinese, Moab and Ammon, right? But all the heathen of the earth have had their turns having us in slavery. As a result of enslaving us, now it's their turn. You're gonna go to verse, you know what? We are gonna start at verse 12 and we're gonna read down, right? This is Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 12. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation saith the Lord for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it a perpetual desolation. So here in Jeremiah 25 and 12, we see that the Most High God is promising vengeance unto the Babylonians for having us in slavery for 70 years, which they did. The Babylonians were then taken down by the Persians and the Medes. So that would be the nation of Elam and the nation of Japheth, right? And then they put us in slavery, although it was a lesser slavery because we built the second temple under the rulership of the Persians but it's still servitude nonetheless. The children of God are meant to be rulers over everyone on the earth. But when we break God's commandments, he puts us underneath their heel and they rule over us, right? Just like we read uh, a couple of times before in Deuteronomy 28, where we read about the curses, right? But let's keep going. Verse 13, and I will bring upon that land all my words, which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Now, if that's to be understood, God is saying through Jeremiah, whatever they do to us, they're going to pay for it. Right? I'm not making that up, correct? Okay. Now, I'm going to turn to a few pictures. I'm going to show it to the camera, and I'm going to show it to you, brother. You have to understand something. Lynching, killing babies, that's not new. It's not new. However, they did it worse here in America under the rulership of the white man than they've done it anywhere else in the world. Right? And these are just a few instances of them hanging us and lynching us and using us as target practice and burning us, right? All right, this is what was done in, in 1903. So that's recent. That's not ancient history. All right, this is them using a battering rail ram to go into a jail to get one of our brothers, All right? Now, you see, they even hung some of their own people, all right? Another one of our people they lynched. Another one they lynched. Another one they lynched. Another one they lynched. 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 Just to give you an idea, right? I'm going to reread it. This is Jeremiah, chapter 25. Yeah, so, no, you got it? No, you, no, you, what you were going to say, you said, you're trying you to find said, Oh, I'm sorry? I'm saying it for you. Oh, yeah, so I can, yeah, 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 <laughs> forgive me. You're right. But this is Jeremiah, chapter 25 and verse 14. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. So if they have to be paid back according to their deeds, and their deeds are lynching us, hanging us, stomping our babies out after cutting them out of the womb of a woman, cutting hands off because we didn't find enough gold, putting us on cargo slave ships and sailing us to and fro around the world as slaves. What has to happen to them as a response to that, to balance things out? But does, does that really need to happen though? Yes. And the reason for that it's because the Most High God is a God of judgment, right? As a matter of fact, while I'm holding this, 
I'm going to grab something for you. Because the Most High God's judgment is like a ring. Right. And I know that if there was a way to non-violently get around these issues, I would rather take that route too. I'm going to tell you, when I look at those pictures in that book, if I could talk to a white man and get him to love me, I would do that. But we've been talking to these people for how many years now? It's been about 500 years. We've been trying to tell all these nations that we're not just lazy niggers. We're not lazy beaners. Hell, we're not even telling the people that we're the children of God. We're trying to be one of them. And how do they treat us? Like shit, right? Despite all of our trying to fit in, despite us trying to be kind, they requite our, our righteousness and our kindness with hostility, with dread. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of you being by yourself with your own people. So much so, they won't even teach you who you are. And all we've tried to do is heal their nation and work for them and be their friend and be their family. Don't they say we're brothers? But when the white man goes out, does he have to worry about the cops killing him? No. How about the Japanese man? No. Koreans? No. It seems some way, somehow, they always manage to kill one of us, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. So much for us talking them down and convincing them to be our friend. Because if that were possible, Ernest, it would have happened by now. That's something I always want you to keep in mind. You asked a very good question. Is this the only way that things can be made right? I'm going to show you a few things in the Bible that's going to demonstrate to you it is the only way. Unfortunately. Well, hold on one second. Because the Most High God's judgment is like a ring. Right? What goes around comes around. Everybody knows that proverb. Everybody knows that saying. But when you see that God's judgment is just like that, then it begins to make more sense. This is 2nd Ezra, chapter 5 and verse 42. And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring, like as there is no slackness of the last. Even so, there is no swiftness of the first. So the Most High God's judgment begins a certain way, and it ends the exact way. So what if it begins with me stealing your car? Then in the end, guess whose car got to get stolen? Mine. Because what goes around, comes around. So what if the history of a particular people has nothing but rape, robbery, and slavery in it? You know, you know the rest, right? It has to happen to them. I'm going to help you find it, but turn with me to the book of Obadiah. Then the Apocalypse? Uh, no, that's going to be um, after the book of Amos in the Old Testament. I don't know how you turn it to all the pages that I've marked up, man. <laughs> this is almost a new Bible. I'm like, yo, I ain't marked it up that much. So we're going to go to Obadiah, and we're going to read this whole book because it's only one chapter. Right? I need you to understand that the Most High God has not forgotten anything. Remember what we read in uh, the book of 1 Peter 2 and 8 a couple weeks ago? A day to the Most High God is a thousand years to us. So it's only been about 5,000 years, right, since we came out of Egypt and all the way from then till today. It's only been about 45 to 5,000 years, 4,500 to 5,000. Right? So if that's the case, you're talking about less than a week. The Most High God has been watching all this going on with us. you got to remember, the Most High God set all this in motion. Nothing has happened that he hasn't accounted for. Right? So he knew these nations were going to abuse us. He knew they were going to destroy us. And he also knew that in the end time, that they would be paid back. And everything would be made square. And everybody would go back to their respective lands. We're going to cover that too. Because the thing that you have to understand is the Most High God's ways are not our ways. We're going to get into that, right? But this is Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 1. This, this 
is Obadiah, one and one. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. So this is concerning the white man and his nation in particular. We're going to read about who Esau is today. Right after this, we're going to go directly to them. Because the other nations, I don't think you're as concerned about them as you are about white folks. Because those are the people talking to you. Am I correct? Okay, that's, that's a safe assumption. This is Obadiah, one and one. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So what we have here is we have a direct decree by Obadiah through the Spirit of the Lord that the Most High God has made the so-called Edomites greatly despised among the nations. Now, have you ever sat on, on a bus or in an area full of black, Hispanic, Asian, like a bunch of different type of people except for white folks? And then somebody who might be a white man walks in, say he doesn't bathe or he's acting weird. Don't you all look at each other and kind of give each other that face like, what the fuck's up with this nigga? They're greatly despised among all nations. They, all the nations might have abused us, but everybody despises the white man because of what he does by nature. He's a backstabber. He's greedy. Money is his God. Everybody despises him, right? Verse 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Ain't that the attitude of the so-called white man? Who's going to bring me down? I'll fight you for it. I'm sure you've encountered that out here a couple of times. You, you have a dispute about something, and they want to bring it to fisticuffs. They're ready to murder you in cold blood over something that you can replace. But that's his spirit. He's what you call a bloody man. A man who's prone to violence, right? And in his heart, because he has the gift of the sword, we're going to cover that, he believes that he's untouchable, right? Verse 4, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So despite all the pomp, all the pompousness of these people, all their tanks, their planes and weapons, the Most High God said, I'm going to take you down from your high perch. I'm going to take you down from being the ultimate military on the planet. I'm going to take you down while you have nuclear weapons, right? Verse 5, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? So when it says if grape gatherers and thieves came to you by night, that's talking about if somebody broke in your house and began to steal things. Most thieves, once they get what they want, they leave. They don't take everything. But when the white man steals from you, what does he do? He takes everything. And you know that when you go to the grocery store, aren't you paying taxes on money that's already taxed to you when you get paid by your job? Yes. So you're being taxed twice. Meanwhile, the average American hasn't got a significant raise in over 40 years. So our pay isn't even adjusted for inflation. I'm not even talking about the major shit like land theft. This land belongs to your people. The whole land of America, Canada, Mexico, and South America belongs to somebody else. But the white man claims all. You know why? Because he steals until there's nothing left. Now, I'm coming out with a different attitude today because I need to show you. The people who are telling you to love everybody, they're the same people standing on stolen land. They're the same descendants of people who raped, robbed, and murdered your ancestors and took from them until there was nothing left. And now that it's time for them to get ready to pay up, now they're going to tell you, no, you got to love me. How dare you expect your God to get vengeance for you? He should love me and you the same when God never said that. Right? Moving on, though. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hid things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. 
Now, what this means is all of Esau's friends, because the white man ain't alone. Like I said before, you have Asian people who come to America. You have Middle Eastern people who come to America. You have Africans who come to America, actual Hamites. And when they come here, they can readily go to a bank without even being able to speak English, and they can get a loan. Have you ever tried to get a business loan, Ernest? No. I'm going to tell you, it's next to impossible if you are black, Hispanic, or native Indian. But if you're a Chinese man coming here to get your business started, you don't have any problems. If you're a, if, even if you're a Nigerian coming here, you don't have no problems. Because guess what? The people who come here who are heathens, they are counted as friends to the people in power here today. And as a result, they don't mind helping their friends, but they sure as hell help, uh, they mind helping their enemies. And when you try to get help from your enemy, they deny you any chance they get, right? Not to mention, you see what's going on in the world today. America's about to go into World War III. So all of America's allies are now turning their back on her, right? Saudi Arabia, they backed out of something called the petrodollar deal or the petrol oil deal. Basically, a guarantee for 50 years that all oil sold would be denominated in dollars. They've left that deal, meaning the dollar is officially worthless. There's nothing backing it at all. It's a pure fiat currency. You have members of NATO now starting to question America's methods, and they are now leaving the organization. Turkey being a primary player right now in the Middle East, who no longer wants to get down with America's war tactics. And they're giving pushback. So now they're being pushed out of NATO. I could go on all day, but you see what I'm saying. America's allies are now turning away from it, right? Verse 7. Salakia, verse 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed. Teman is a sub-house within the house of Esau. So you know you have the Israelites, but the, within the Israelites you have Judah, Benjamin, Levi, etc., Within the house of Esau, you have likewise. You have the Amalekites, the Temanites, and so on, right? And the Temanites within Esau are known as the wise Edomites. So like with us, we have the nation of Issachar. Y'all would guide us when it comes to the stars and celestial events, right? When it comes to, say, navigating the, the dainties of the earth, the finer things, the tribe of Asher, we would turn to. Why? Because the prophecy surrounding them is that Asher's foot would be dipped in oil, meaning that they would have the dainty things of the earth. Oil, gemstones like diamonds, emeralds, rubies, all that. You know what I'm saying? So you, we would turn to each other for you know different things. The house of Esau, they turned to the Temanites for wisdom. And in the end, you see the white man is making a bunch of mistakes. Look around America. This nation is falling apart. The wise men are gone. God said he would do that to these people, right? Verse 10, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. So when our people were in dire straits, being invaded and dominated by our enemies, the so-called white man was right beside them, cheering them on, attempting to destroy us, right? That's why the Most High God said through Obadiah in verse 10, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. It's because of the constant killing of us, the constant enslaving of us, the constant stealing of our land. This is why the Most High God is going to destroy their people forever. Now, you know about regeneration. You die, your spirit returns unto the Father, and then you get your judgment, you rest, and then you come back here. But God is talking about a final judgment for these people, where that cycle is going to be cut off entirely, and they're no longer going to be on the earth. Right? I'll wait. Oh, wait. That way you can follow. Sorry. No, no, you good, brother. Sister, you got time for the Bible today? A couple minutes? You do believe in the Bible? You do? Are you native Hispanic or Mexican? Hispanic, you're from the tribe of Issachar. You are an Israelite. Issachar means he who was hired. Who are the hardest working people on the planet? Mexicans. Hands down. 
You special sister. I just want to point your attention. You see those two uh, pigeons right there? Yep. Did you know the pigeon is God's favorite bird? Yeah, it's in the book of Ezra, <laughs> second Ezra. The reason why I bring that up is because just like you have a favorite type of car, you have a favorite place that you like to go. If you could think of a vacation spot, you have a spot in your head that you want to go. We all have those things. So does God. And God has a favorite people too. And that favorite people are the Israelites. Everybody else, God couldn't give less of a damn about. And you know why that is, Ernest? Because his job isn't to give a damn about them. That's our job. And I'm going to show you that too. Because all the nations, all the heathen in the kingdom, they're going to be under us. I have a question. What is a king without a kingdom? Nothing, right? So if we're kings and priests walking the earth, we're meant to rule over something. A domain. The domain that we're going to rule over is not just physical. It pertains unto the peoples of the earth. And that would mean the heathen are going to be ruled over by the Israelites. And we're going to cover that too. That's in Isaiah 60. Right? But, whenever you're ready, keep going. Yep. This is Obadiah. 1 and 12. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah, in the day of their destruction, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou should not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. So let's take stock of what all has been said here. God is saying they shouldn't have joined in when other nations came against us. He's also saying that they shouldn't have stolen our things when they had the opportunity to. They also shouldn't have spoken against us when they had an opportunity to as well. Because we had never done any wrong to them. So the question is, why would they do any of those aggressive acts to us? You're going to see in Genesis, it talks about Esau hating Jacob because of the blessing. Because you have to understand the chosen lineage is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then the Israelites. But what if... Jacob had somebody who was second place and he was rejected. What happens to second place? How they view first place a lot of times. Jealousy, hatred. I should be the winner. Why not me? You think the white man ain't doing that? The white man thinks he's God now. How do they think Jesus Christ looks? Like a white man. When they portray God, how does God look? Like a white man. But what does the Bible describe God and Jesus Christ looking like? Men with skin like burned brass, with woolly hair, black men. And what do they call black men? They call us niggers. They call us monkeys. They call us lazy, despite us being slaves for over 400 years and building this whole goddamn nation. They call us like fucking lazy. But you see here, Obadiah is saying that they shouldn't have done those things. They shouldn't have done any of those offensive acts to us because we're the children of God, right? Verse 14, neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Now that's manifold because not only do you flee your enemies when you go to war, but don't you flee your enemies when you run away from a plantation in slavery? Yeah, you do. Did you know the Bible says if you catch a runaway slave, you're not supposed to turn him back in? You're supposed to help him. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. But if a white man caught you trying to escape the plantation, what would he do to you? Hang you. Lash you up. Or turn you in. All three are equally terrible. But you're seeing here the Bible says you shouldn't have did that. I'm trying to give you a track record. Because you're going to have people coming up to you with no knowledge, telling you, hey, you shouldn't think like that. That's why the Bible tells you God's ways are not your ways. If God says he hates a group of people and you say you love them, who's right? God. Now I have a question. Shouldn't you hate God's enemies? I just, you don't have to give me an answer, just think. 
because we're going to cover a few things right after this. We're going to go to Psalms 83, and then we're going to go to Psalms, I believe, 139. That's out of my Bible, so I'm going to have to get that one back from you, right? But let's keep going, right? Verse 15, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. You hear that? For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. So all the people who had us in slavery, not just the white man, Asian man too, East Indian man too, African man too, all the heathen, right? For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Don't that sound really similar to what we read in Jeremiah 25? does according to what they did to us is what's going to happen to them now i understand that this is a hard pill to swallow while you have people around you who are kind to you and are heathen but here's the thing they don't read this part of the book these are the parts of the bible that they don't read because it condemns them have a question if you had a letter come in the mail didn't have a name on it but it said to whoever reads this letter you are to be put to death in a week would you automatically assume that's you or somebody else somebody else simply because you don't want to die in a week but what if that letter has your name on it and it says in a week you're going to get killed now you're going to try to come up with another name or you might just deny it altogether. now this letter's bullshit you know what the white man did for the longest time? Because I'm not the oldest one to do this. Some of my elders have been out doing this for over 30 years. They've been telling all these nations that judgment is coming. You know what they called them? Crazy. They called them jobless bums who had nothing better to do with their time. But now look, 30 years later, the judgment's right here. And you know what's happening now? Now he's trying to bargain. He's going through the stages of grief. First you deny it. Then you get angry, and then you accept it. You see what I'm saying? We're going through the stages of grief with these people. You gotta understand, some of these people are still at stage one, denial. He's wrong, he's a liar. Whenever they say you're a liar about the Bible, just read it in the Bible. That's one thing that I had to, I had to have resolute in myself before I came out here. Because you know, I've been coming out here prim primarily alone. For over three years I've had many people tell me that I'm crazy many people tell me I don't know what I'm talking about but every time you ask me to prove it out the Bible don't I look in the Bible and I prove it to you I show you in the Bible where it says exactly what I'm saying or what I'm saying in general because sometimes I'm not exact I have to paraphrase right but when I say the most high God despises the white man I'm not making it up and it's not because I dislike their people although I do dislike their people a great deal but all the things that I'm saying to you are in the book, right? Verse 15, I'm going to read it again. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done upon, or unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain. What's the holy mountain? What's God's holy mountain where he dwells? The Israelites. We're his holy people. We are, in the Bible, it talks about us literally as the temples of God. We are where God spiritually dwells. He dwells in his people. And if they've drunk or they've consumed through the exploitation of God's people, then what do you think God is going to do to them? Y'all got time for the Bible today? Not today. No? no. Okay. Do y'all believe in the Bible? That's a shame. I will say this, in the last days, sister, I would find a black or Hispanic man. Yeah, I'm going there. We too, we too far in the game to be cooling like this. The white man that killed 250 million of us. You can't find yourself one of your own people? For real. I'm going to read it again, because even our sisters don't understand the white man about to pay for all the slavery. This is Obadiah 1 and 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Now you see that response? They call you crazy. But God is saying it himself through his prophets. They're going to pay for what they've done. 
What's up, man? You got a question? Yeah, you have water. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, you have water. Yeah, 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 I got you. Uh, it's in here. Right? No, you good, man. You can't help being thirsty. There you go, brother. And I'm going to tell you, while she was walking up here, she looked like she was in traffic. She was scared because she knew I was going to bring it up. And I'm going to tell you, our sisters aren't proud to be with these damn devils. That sister just trying to have a lifestyle afforded to her that she can't afford herself. And instead of getting with one of her own men, thugging it out, working it out, and, and enduring with her own people, she trying to take a shortcut to get in the bag, and that's getting with a white man. And you notice, he didn't stand up to fight for her. You know why? Because he knows what I'm saying is true. No black, Hispanic, or Native American woman in her right mind should be caught dead with a damn white man. The people who've raped, robbed, and murdered God's people for 500 years. Walking on stolen land like God ain't gonna get you back for that. Hey, yeah, yeah, what's up, man? Um, do you mind if I read this? Please, yeah. like, it's gonna take like, like two minutes. Yeah, just read it, that's cool. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Romans 8.31. Uh-huh. What then shall we say to these things? God is for us, we need answers. Right? Who's us? But keep going, keep going, keep going. We're going to go over it after this. What I learned this week is that religion is a very touchy subject to some people. Uh -huh. I, I am using the Bible, I need guidance. I want to learn and know more about this man who was worshipped by millions. Now, I was told the white man is the devil. I don't think that is entirely true. If it is true, then I'm going to let God handle them at judgment day. Okay. I, ain't no, I ain't in no way, shape, or form racist towards any human being. Yes, we are all different in our own way. At the same time, you need that doesn't make us any better or lower than the next person. I was told that God doesn't love everyone. I don't know that. I don't know uh, how true that is. I personally believe that's true. We are all His children, uh, and He wants us all with Him at His throne. Yes, we all make mistakes, but that's why He gave us free will. He knows of our wrongdoings, no matter how big or small. What surprised me is that He still loves us and will always be, no matter where you're at, who you're with, no matter the weather, time, day, week, month, year, how they are going to be or not believe it. There are a lot of things I don't know about uh, the Bible or religion in general. Before I make judgment, uh, I would like to do my homework and try to interpret the Bible in my own way. I just feel that God has, that, that God loves everyone. Okay. That's fine. I'm gonna tell you, man, this is the, the hardest door for people to get through. And if loving God's enemies has stopped you, I wanna read two things before you go. Because I already see you're trying to get up out the area. And that's cool, man. And I'm gonna say this to my camera. I'm not being facetious when I say that this is the hardest thing for people to get by. But God has enemies. If you don't hate God's enemies, in the day of judgment, God don't love everybody. And everybody's not being saved except for the Israelites. That's it, man. I don't, I don't see you. I don't see you any different. I don't, I don't hate you. I don't uh, dislike you or what you don't. Know, you preach what you preach. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I'm not going to stand here and uh, judge you. People will tell you that you're wrong. And, you know, and if anybody knows about it, how can I, how can I uh, say you're wrong? My question is, though, to you, do you call yourself a believer in the Bible or of the Bible? So if you call yourself a believer of the Bible, and yet you're picking and choosing which parts you wish to believe, then, I mean, I, I just, unfortunately, man, you know, the most high God, that, that's not righteousness to me. But I'm going to read this to you, right? This is Psalms 139 and 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am I not grieved with those? that rise up against thee, 
I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. So if God's enemies are your friends, you know who you are in the eyes of God. I wish nothing but the best for you, brother. But I want you to take stock of where your life is right now. You are standing in a land known as Texas. This land belongs to you. You are on the streets in a land that your enemy stole from you. And the very same people who stole your land and gave you the drug to be addicted to are telling you that God loves everybody. When you know for certain throughout this book, God don't say that. You know that. With that being said, man, best of luck to you, man. I'm going to be honest, man. If, if you don't believe, I'm not saying don't come listen, but if you're not trying to learn, just do your own thing. Did you say Romans 8 and 31? Okay. Because I, I, I want to I show you just one thing before you go. Okay. This is Romans. I'm going to reread it. What shall we then say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? Actually, you know what? Let's keep reading. All right? 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all, or for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified him. So who is God's elect? Because that's who the us is. God's elect is in the book of Isaiah. All right? But brother, I see you're trying to get away from this. I see it makes you uncomfortable. I'm going to tell you, man, watch your back when you're in this. I always love you, man. Of course. Right. But let's get back to the lesson. All right. We're going to move this over because this is like a weird place. All right. I've said it before. I'll keep saying it, man. The same for everybody. And you got a lot of blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians. They can't let go of their slave master. They're going to die attached to it. Right? We're going to go ahead and get that out of the book of Isaiah 13. Do I got time for the Bible today? Two minutes? If you're black, Hispanic, or Native Indian, just know you're an Israelite. You're the people that the Bible's talking about. Yep. See, most of our people don't realize, man, when you truly come to serve God, you will be hated for Christ's sake. For Yahweh Shai Hamashiach's sake, you will be hated. And it's hard to be hated by so many when it seems like so few people are in your corner. But that's what the Most High God is demanding of his people. You got time for the Bible today, brother? All right, man, I, I see, I see. <laughs> Take care, yeah, yeah. Have a good one, man. Trying to tell blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians that they have enemies. Trying to tell them that they have people that are literally standing on their necks. Talking about equality. Talking about coming together. Talking about you're their brother. Meanwhile, when you talk about reparations, or them getting off the land that they stole, all of a sudden you're being unreasonable. Right? That's why the Bible says it straight. God's enemies are not getting any mercy. The white man... Japanese, the Chinese, ain't no mercy to the wicked, right? But this is Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 14. And it shall be as a chaste rope, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, 
and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. So this is going to be the judgment that doesn't just come to the wicked heathen, but to all our people who join forces with those who have enslaved and attempted to destroy God's people. That's why when people say God loves everybody, I always dare them to prove it. I dare them to prove it. Because they're going to go to the same tried and true scriptures that are taken out of context, where all you got to do is just read a little bit more or see what world means, whether you go to Hebrews 1 and 1 or Isaiah 45 and 17, or you can even go into Wisdom of Solomon where it talks about the whole world basically being in the ephod with the 12 stones representing the 12 tribes. You know, it's very bittersweet to see our people not be able to break away from their damn slave master and they're on the fucking street. That's very bitter, right? But I understand that we are in the times where most black, Hispanic, and Native American people are gonna choose death. Just as the Most High God tried to implore us to choose life in the book of Deuteronomy. And we insisted on choosing the very same things that destroy our people. Conjoining ourselves unto the very same people who perpetuate our slavery to this day. Truly is a shame. But let's keep going, right? <laughs> right? So we see here in Isaiah. 13, 14 through 16, right? That the Most High God is promising death to those who refuse to separate. Y'all believe in the Bible? Of course. Of course. You know what tribe you go back to in the Bible, brother? Excuse me? You know what tribe you go back to in the Bible? Uh, no. Well, who's God's chosen people in the Bible? You know? The Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't he have a special people in the Bible? Remember the people who came out of Egypt with Moses? Yes. Israelites? Yes. Did you know you're probably one of them? Are you Mexican by chance? Yes. Okay. So one of the prophecies surrounding a group in the Bible called Issachar, right, is that Issachar would be a strong ass or a donkey crouching down between two burdens. What's the unofficial animal for the Mexican people? Well, that's on your flag. That's the Spaniard. She knows what I'm talking about. It's the burro, the donkey. The donkey and usually the donkey has two satchels on both sides right crouching down between two burdens now what does Issachar mean it means he who is hired who are the hardest working people on the planet Mexicans hands down not even a contest you're an Israelite brother you ever wonder why you work so hard paving all these roads building all these buildings and then the white man turns around and calls you lazy don't you wonder how that how can that exist in the same hemisphere how can they enslave our people for 500 years and then they're calling us lazy and we need to get three jobs. Meanwhile, they're the ones who are sitting in air conditioning while you're building a house. Exactly. But the Bible said that that would happen to God's people. I want to read you this one thing before you go, right? Because if you know you're a, an Israelite, one of God's chosen, what should you be doing? Because you call yourself a believer of, of Jesus, right? Okay. And that's good. How many commandments are there, brother? I'm not, I'm not asking these to condemn you. Because I'm going to tell you, the church would tell you 10. Yeah, yeah. There's 613, brother. 613. See? Your eyes went this big. Now, in the book of Judith, it says if the Israelites don't obey God, it lets their enemies take over them and rule over them. Think about this as y'all walk. Blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians, we're the strongest, fastest, and mightiest people on the planet. The white man took all of us down at the same time. And he can't go outside without sunscreen. How did he do it? God had to help him, right? If you read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, it talks about if we don't obey God after verse 15, that we will be under curses. One of the curses is that we will be given into the hands of our enemies. Always remember that. We all got taken down by the same enemy who can't even hold a candle to you in soccer. I see my Mexican brothers playing soccer. I see y'all boxing. Y'all going neck and neck with us. And yet the white man rules over both of us. Think about that. How? Right? But this is Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. 
Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. With that, brother, I say peace to you. You're an Israelite. And sister, if you're Mexican as well, you come from the same tribe, right? You're a king. You're a princess. Keep these commandments. You've seen brothers like me standing out here with a Bible, right? Yeah. yeah stop and get fed, man, because you see World War III is here. You know they're sending out draft letters now, right, to everybody yeah, yeah. under the age of 30. You ready to go fight in Ukraine? You going to go? If you ain't going to go, I recommend you get familiar with this. All right, y'all? All right, brother. Of course, man. What's your name? Uh, oh, Haya L. Haya L. What's your name? How do you say it? G-A. G-A. Okay. Gael. So that's, that's similar. All right. Yeah, yeah. Y'all be well. Be well. All right. This is Ecclesiastes, chapter 11 and verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the ways of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. So just because you're young and might not be aware of what all is going on doesn't give you an excuse to be ignorant. Doesn't give you an excuse to transgress God's laws. you got to be aware of what's going on. Right? Because God's going to hold us all accountable. How you doing? Believe in the Bible at all? Yeah. Are you Mexican by chance? What are you? Salvadorian. You're from the tribe of Zebulon. You're an Israelite. If you got more time, I'd love to talk to you about it, brother. But see, our people are walking around. We call ourselves black. We call ourselves Mexican. We call ourselves Bolivian, Brazilian, El Salvadorian. The native peoples of those lands are all Israelites. And they were taken down by the same people. Whether you call them the French, the Spanish, the English, all the same people, so-called white man, who came lynching and a-burning, raping and a-robbing to this day. Right? I keep looking over there because there's a white man. He's very interested in what I got to say, and that's cool. Never know. Because our people come in all shades and sizes. It's not about how you look. It's about who your father is. See, we're trying to give our people their heritage back. And many of our people don't want it. Because that means you're going to have to separate from those who gave you a pseudonym as a title. When I say a pseudonym, I mean a false name. A misnomer. Right? Most of our people never stop and think, how can you be a the savior in? That's what El Salvador means, the savior. How can you be Hispanic? That means property of Spain. And it goes on and on. Whether you're Brazilian, whether you're an indigenous Canadian. See, all these titles, these are monikers put on us by our enemies. But when we're trying to give our people back their heritage, many of our people don't want it. Because as I said, it's going to make them a pariah to the very same people who say God loves everybody and forgave everyone. When God never said that anywhere in the Bible. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of condemnation in the Bible to the people who raped and robbed God's children. Let's read some of it. This is Amos chapter 1 and verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. So here we have the prophet Amos saying for three transgressions, yea, and for four, God's not going to turn away your punishment. The Edomites are who you would call white people today. So you see all throughout the Bible that God's not turning away your punishment because you've consistently pursued God's people with the intent of killing them, displacing them of their possessions and their land. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. 
So Teman and Basra are cities in Edom. And God is saying through Amos that he's going to send a fire upon them to burn them up. So you have to question, if this was said over 2,000 years ago, what are the capital cities of Edom today? Gee golly, I wonder if it's not America. And what's about to happen to America because her enemies are finally able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her on the battlefield? America's about to be bombarded by nuclear missiles. See, even that prophecy is in the Bible. But most of you black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, you don't read enough of the Bible to get sense of what's being spoken of. And just like the times of old, the Most High God is sending his prophets back out to these streets to let you know what time it is. And it's time for judgment. Again, I'm in a bad mood because my brother literally turned away from his heritage to embrace the very same people who are responsible for him being homeless in his own land. Responsible for him being addicted to drugs that his people don't even make. Responsible for not putting child traffickers and pedophiles to death how they deserve, as the Bible says to. Now, I'm not trying to put the brother's business all out in the street, but it needs to be known. Some of our people don't understand what side they really are on. And as a result, they're trying to be on everyone's side when God told you what side you're gonna be on or you're gonna die on. And to our people who can't separate from our slave masters, the Bible already says it, you're gonna die right along with them. The one thing the Bible doesn't allow for are traitors, coons and those who wish to bring comfort and quarter to God's enemies. This is something that you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians have been learning for the last 500 years, but the lesson still ain't sank in for some reason. But let's keep going. Because that was just one instance. Right? We were in the book of Obadiah, and we're going to read a little bit more of it. Because verse 18 is looming ahead. See, again, when people say they come to serve the Lord, there's a lot of things in this Bible that, quite frankly, when you read about it, it makes God seem like he's very hateful. But the reality is God is very hateful toward his enemies. This is Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heat. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. So this is saying to all the heathen who've exploited God's children, don't worry about it. You're going to pay God back the best way you can. And that's by going through slavery the same way we did. Verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So this is saying that as they dispossess stuff of, of our possessions, they dispossessed us as they stole our land as they tried to steal our heritage, the same thing is going to happen to them. And it's only fair. Verse 18, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubborn, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord had spoken. You got a question? I could barely hear over there, so I figured I'd come over here. Okay. So I have to ask, yeah. do, you, do you believe the Bible is a book for all peoples? Yes. Why do you believe that? Uh, because why would it not be? If it's, I mean, the thing is in the Bible, it says it's, that it is for basically everyone. Where does it say that? All over. What if I told you it doesn't? 
like to hear what you have to say about it. This is Amos, chapter 3 and verse 2. We'll start at 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. That's one witness. So God is saying through Amos that he only knows Israel. That was a while ago, though. Was it? Yeah. So when did he say he knew everybody after that? I, I'd have to go ahead and search it up for sure. myself. But I mean, the thing is, there's multiple times where it says, like, later on, where the uh, apostles were preaching to the Gentiles and everyone as well. And who were those Gentiles? Well, it was basically saying just the people that were not Jews. In which case, those Gentiles could be anyone. Okay, so I'm going to read something to you that's going to show you that the context of the word Gentile in the New Testament doesn't mean just anybody. Right. Because when you're talking about salvation, the kingdom of heaven, those were made by promise by the Most High. And that wasn't made to everybody. Those promises were made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So when did God say in everybody else? Didn't. Yeah, it's 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 not as black and white as that. Well, okay, let's go over the blessing of Abraham. D doesn't it say, "Blessed are they that bless thee, and cursed are those that curse thee"? Okay. So, what? How have y'all treated the Israelites? Who are blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians? The people who fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28. I have not treated them any way because I don't know who they are. Right. So I'm telling you who they are: They're blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Right. But, so, but and, what you're and, saying and is, I'm going to go a step further. Yeah. How have your people treated this? What would you classify as my people? So-called white people. Yeah, but like as far as white, what are you talking white? Uh, I mean, people there's... who descend from Esau or Edom. Those who are born ah. with translucent skin where their blood shows forth through their skin. Because that's like a really large number of people. It is. So why is why are they my people? because that's who you descend from. Aren't black people my but people? Everybody descended from Adam and Eve, They though. do. I'm glad you said that. So let's go ahead and get something else before I get this in Ephesians. Yeah. Right. And this is to my camera. These, this, these are points of contention that we get time and time again. Right. Because I would assume if I were part of the people who did nothing but rape, rob, and murder, I would say God loves me too. But the reality is, God says throughout the Bible over and over again that he don't love everybody. Else. As a matter of fact, God compares the heathen to a drop falling from a vessel. In other words, they mean nothing in his eyes. This is 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also, whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. That our sake is for the Israelites' sake, right? As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be likened unto spittle. What spittle? I just want to hear you say it. Basically trash. Okay, that works. Yeah. But be likened unto spittle has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So I have a question. How does God view the heathen? Can we at least agree on that? Okay, so the only thing is somebody can do something wrong and still be saved by coming to Jesus. What is being saved? Oof, that's a hard one. No, it's so not. It's, it, in, well, it's in Luke chapter 1. It is because so many people have a different opinion. No, no, it's in the it. What I'm trying to tell you is it's in the Bible what it means to be saved. It's in Luke chapter 1. And this is to my camera, to the people who come against this, this message, because I'm not the only one who's saying this. I'm sure you've seen brothers like me on Corners talking about this. Everybody says they read the Bible, but it seems nobody reads chapter 1. John 3 and 16, God so loved the world, right? But when we say that world is Israel, everybody says, well, there's only one world, the earth. But Hebrews 1 and 1 on down talks about there being worlds, plural. 
When you go to Isaiah 45 and 17, Israel is a world unto itself. So y'all aren't reading the Bible nearly as much as y'all are like portraying yourselves to read the Bible. And that's one of the reasons why blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are so confused. Because we have those who put us in slavery holding up this man's image. Does Christ look like this, fight? by the way? Is he a white man? No, he probably was dark skinned. Dark skinned? How dark? Say what? How dark? I have no idea. I wasn't Did you there. know that's in Revelations chapter 1 as well? Which further proves my point. Go ahead. All right? something in Ephesians 2 to you real quick because I want to show you that those Gentiles in the New Testament that's us this is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11 wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at the time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no help and without God in the world. But now in yet, well, Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So what you're seeing is Israelites can be called Gentiles as well. So I have a question. How do you know when they're talking about natural born Gentiles, which would be somebody who's born a heathen or an Israelite who's living um, uh, basically a way that makes them a Gentile? How do you know the difference? How about if it harmonizes with the Bible? In like what, what do you mean by that? For instance, in Isaiah 60, it says the kingdom of, of heaven, right, is going to be built by the hands of our enemies who enslaved us. So you've never read it, I know. Well, that's I, in the I've Old read it because I've read the whole Bible. It's just not uh, something that I recall exactly. If you could, uh, sure. I'll refresh where. your memory. Okay. Yeah. I have a question for you before I read this. How did America get built? How did America get built? How did it get built? Basically by people rebelling. America got built by people rebelling. Basically, yeah. So how did the cotton get picked? By people rebelling in the cotton field and the cotton just got picked? Wait, what does that have to do with anything? Because we were slaves, brother. I understand that right. you were not a slave because you weren't around at that time. I'm, I'm about to bring something to your attention. If we're paying taxes to our enemies, that's yeah. called slavery. It might not be the same as you whipping my back, but okay, guess so what? You got a place that you do that at that has barbed wire concrete walls called prison. Right, where my people fill it up by the millions. What's the difference though between me paying taxes versus you paying taxes? Though? Your people do that to you, and you just heard. God don't care about y'all. All right, but he that's cares what, what you like, do so, to his children. So if you're saying you're a slave, that means I'm also a slave, right? Yeah, but you're you're missing what I just said. Okay. Even if that's the reality. Yeah. Who does God care about? God cares about humans in general. As Who does far he as think is filled? Unsure. You just had it read to you in Second Ezra six, or chapter six. Well, or God thinks of the heathen as spittle. Hey, correct, but I guess that depends on who you call the heathen. Those who are not Israel. Mm -hmm. And you a king walking the earth, brother. Our native Hispanic brothers, y'all are kings. The hardest workers on the planet. God bless you as well. I appreciate it, brother. See, to our people, we're starting to realize that our sentence here in slavery is almost up. And y'all sentence is about to start. Because that's how the kingdom of heaven is about to be built. I'll read that to you. This is Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. That's you in this case, right? And that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. This is how heaven's going to be built. So I have to ask. I go back to my original question. How do you know when it's talking about a Gentile who's naturally born a Gentile and one of my people who are living as a Gentile and therefore are called a Gentile? unclear about that again it would come to your opinion on some people's like they would they would say different things um so i have a question for you <laughs> uh 
I'm assuming at this point you're saying that anybody who is of a lighter color skin, which in, would oh. include... So I'm, I want to direct your attention to All this right. man right here, real quick. Yeah. You see that man? Don't he look like a white man? No. The man in the middle, right there. He doesn't look white. What does he look like? I have no idea. That's Jason Kidd. His father's a black man, his mother's white. He looks okay. white. I mean, not really. The thing is that, oh, that's the thing with w saying somebody's a white person. It is hard to differentiate, I guess, because you got Italians and you got Irish and whatnot. So I'm like, who, who would you call white? I guess. You're asking that question to the people or a person who's not of the people who made that term. Remember eugenics? You ever heard of that? Your people made that up. Okay. In the 15 and 1600s, y'all started calling yourselves white, and you called us nigger or black. Okay. It means the same thing. But still, if you're saying that I would fall into the category of white, mm -hmm. then I'm assuming you have a definition for what that even is. Sure. It's the definition that you gave us, those of white power. Okay. So if that's the case, then you're mm -hmm. saying anyone, including that man on the board, nope. how, how do you figure? That's why I ask you who your father is. My, my father was Native American, but the thing is, though... What tribe, man? <laughs> um, Tuscarora. I'm sorry? Tuscarora. Okay. So, yeah, my mother was, like, German or something, and Irish, I think, or Welsh, I forget. So I have a mess of different stuff in me, but... Um, majority of my siblings have more Native American features than I do. I'll say this, man. If you happen to be Native American on your father's side, you're who I'm talking about, who I'm talking to. Keep the commandments. But I'm going to tell you, there's something called the Dawes Rule. Where your people, in order to take the benefits that were given to the real Native Americans, you could have put on your birth certificate for five bucks that you were Native American. Right, exactly. Now, you're at you're trying to ask me how I know who's who. Yeah. The reason why it's so hard to tell is because of what white people did. Right. So again, I have to say, you're asking the wrong person. You need to ask your people. Gotcha. The thing is, it's... Uh for you to be saying about white people versus the Gentiles, I guess, or the black people. Um, of course, it's not just black people you're saying about, like... Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Exactly. Uh, but to differentiate between the two, you have to have some idea of what that is, and that's why I'm just trying to sure. understand your... So, I'm going to give you the, the real tuning fork for this, because it's not about what you say. It's about if your spirit resonates with this book. Right. Right? This is Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. We're going to see some of these curses and why they're on us. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So whoever the real Israelites are, you're going to see curses on them. I'm going to read a couple of them, and I want you to tell me who this applies to. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt, that, that, uh, cursed shalt thou be in the field. So who are the people who are cursed in the city? I'm assuming it would be talking about... What, what time frame are we talking about, though? Any time. Any time frame. Any time frame. Any time that the city. real people so of I'm God assuming it would be are under any a type of slave. sort of richer people, I guess, that are in the city. What? I mean, I'm gonna read it again. For you. I'm gonna read okay, it again. All right. Right? Cursed shalt thou be in the city. What? What does being cursed in the city even look like? Okay, cursed in the city, I guess, would be homeless people. Basically, mm. right? No. How about if I leave my house, I have to worry about cops killing me in cold blood and being found not guilty? That's a curse. How about if I go to the bank to get a bank loan and they deny me based on my race? Ever hear a redlining? No? No. It, it's a it's a procedure and a process that banks use to put certain people in one neighborhood and then certain people in another neighborhood. Gotcha. And what they do is they get a they get a map and they draw red lines on it. And the red line dis district is where you keep put all these people. Gotcha. Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Those are just a few curses. Right. Okay, Who are then, the pe Actually, I have an easy one for you. Who was cursed in the field? Cursed in the field. Um, if if I'm not mistaken, you're referring to black people as slaves? I'm not just referring to black people. Who's picking your fruit today? 
Mexican people, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on the side. Right. So those curses didn't go away. Y'all rotate, rotate us out every so often. Every so often it's us doing work as black people. Then when you get sick of us or you've killed too many of us or you've made us to be a pariah and everybody thinks we're super predators. Remember Hillary Clinton said that about black people? Called us super predators? Okay. Yeah, it didn't age well, right? Right. Yeah. But now the Hispanic brothers are doing it. And guess who's come to America now to be the slaves of tomorrow? All the people coming from Nicaragua, Brazil, El Salvador. Right. Those are all people on this side. You see how cursed in the sea and cursed in the field? Okay. Although right. it applies in different ways throughout the ages, it never changes gotcha. who it applies to. Okay. How you doing, brother? You got time for the Bible today? Yeah, man, the Bible. Okay, okay. That's my favorite. All praises, man. Is your father Mexican by chance? Yeah. Native Mexican? Yeah, my mother's from Mexican. Okay. But what if I told you that God has a special people in the Bible? And there's a reason why no matter how hard your people work building these roads and building these buildings, his special people will be called lazy by their enemies. Has it, have you ever thought about how the Mexican man can work 14-hour days, be known as the hardest worker on the planet, and the white man on his land that he stole can call you lazy? Have you ever think about that, how crazy that is? I'm going to read something to you. This is Deuteronomy 28, and we'll start at 15 to give it context. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. I want to read something to you, right? Verse 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Remember how I said y'all are hard workers, you do all these things, but they call you a spick, a beaner. They call me a nigger. Yeah. Yet, weren't we the slaves who built America? We damn sure were. How about the Spain or the Spaniards who came down and enslaved the Mexican people? Didn't y'all build the empire of Mexico? Yeah, and that was after they destroyed the Aztec empire. So they took your empire, destroyed it, and then said, build my empire for me. So now they call you by a name that's not even the name God gave you. Have you ever read stuff like that in the Bible? I read stuff like that. I like that. I like how you're getting right with God, you know? Yeah, I like man. How you're getting right with God, you know, how it has to be in the right place. Keep the commandments, man. That's what this is about. Man. But you gotta go. We're, yeah, we're in the end days right now. I like we are. Nice meeting. Yeah, nice yeah. meeting. What's your name? Christian. So Christian means follower of Christ. How do you follow Christ, brother? Okay, but what are you supposed to be doing if you call yourself follower of Christ? How you doing, brother? Y'all got let me, time? Let me take. Let me take. Let me take this time. I got you. I gotta get going. Bro. Okay, just, man. Can I pray for you? No, nah, because I don't know what God you're gonna pray to. Because what's God's name? No, man. What is it? It's Yahweh. Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. So you're about to pray for me to a God who don't even have the right name. Now, Elohim means rulers, divine ones, or judges, or powers. And then Jehovah, the letter J is only about 400 years old, 500 years old. But you can pray for me if you like. But when you do pray, face the east and pray in the name of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh that's, that's, that's the, the name of Christ. That's his real name. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, if you don't mind, it's just... But don't pray here. God says to pray in your closet. That's in Matthew closet. 6. Yeah, yeah, man. See, you got to read how to talk to God and how to follow his commandments. That's why I'm out here, man. So if you have any questions, I'm out here every Saturday from 5.30 to 10 p.m. Yes. All right, Christian, my name is Haya M. Haya M. Yes, sir. Haya L. Haya L. You too, you too. This is Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's what we're supposed to be doing entirely. Just keeping God's commandments. Now, I have a question. When we don't keep God's commandments, what are some of the things that can happen to us if we don't keep God's commandments? Did you know slavery is in the Bible? And that's one of the ways that you would know who the Israelites are. 
Verse 68 of Deuteronomy 28. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the first time the, the Israelites left Egypt, they walked out, didn't they? With Moses leading them. This is saying that they would be brought back into Egypt again with ships. So what does Egypt mean then? Because if they're not going to Egypt on a ship, then what does Egypt mean? Let's go to Exodus 20 and 2 because that gives you your answer. To say this, right? You see that most Israelites, they don't care nothing for this book. And this book was written for them, for their learning. But now that we're in the end days, everybody's picking up this book. And this book has nothing to do with the evil at all. Right? This is Exodus 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is likened unto a house of bondage. If I bring you into a house of bondage and I make you work for me, what is that called? Slavery. Slavery. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. That word for buy in the Hebrew, is, it means redeem. No man shall redeem you out of the hand of your enemy. So I have a question. Where are all these people still at? In bondage. In bondage. In the hands of their enemies. That takes us right back to what the mission of Christ is. I got a question for you when you're sure, done. Sure, what's up, man? Um, as far as me classifying as white, uh -huh. what would you say for me to do then in this Search out your fathers. Say what? Search out your fathers. Because you were claiming to be Native American. I'm not going to say whether you are for I'm certain not, or not. I'm not fully Native American. No one's fully anything according right. to the mother's side. But yeah. you can, you're can. you never anything different than what your father is. Because think about it. Who was the first man on the planet? You would say Adam. Yeah. Right? Although men and women were created on the fifth day. And each day cycle in the book of Genesis is a thousand years. Because if you read 1 Peter 2 and 8, a day to the Lord is as a thousand years. Okay. Right? Right. But even if you believe we all come from Adam and Eve, which we do through the flood, because the flood wiped out everybody, right? right? Exactly. Except for Noah and his children. Yeah. So if we all come from Adam, okay. and yet we're all viewed as different, you should look up who your father is so you know with specificity which ancestor you go back to, whether it be Ham, Shem, or Japheth. Okay, Esau, so Elam, Ashur, etc. I guess to me then, regardless of me specifically, somebody descended from, I don't know, so what, uh, Esau, I guess, I don't know, say, what, what should they do? What, what are they called to do? I'm going to be honest, man. The only thing you could do right now to garner any favor is probably going to be something you don't like. Yeah. Right? I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> Man. I rarely get a chance to read this because I'll be honest. This is to my camera. When it comes to mercy for the heathen, for what's been done to my people, I speak as a man when I say this, but I wouldn't give you any mercy if it were up to me. Right. Right? But the Most High God gave you something you can't do. This is Isaiah 49 and 22. Yeah, you know, that's good, that'll work. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Yeah, so wh what exactly is that supposed to do for these people? You're saying that that alone can so what's give them a chance at heaven, I guess. No, it gives you a chance at mercy in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Let me, let me give you some context. All right. right. So one, I need to establish what heaven is. Heaven okay. is not in the sky, it's on earth. Okay. 
if it's on earth, somebody's got to rule it, right? Right. Who's going to be the ruler when heaven is established? I'm assuming God would be. Well, Christ. Yeah. Right? Christ. So if Christ is in rulership and the Israelites are co-heirs with Christ, that means we're going to share in the rulership of his kingdom. He's going to be our king, of course. Right. But we're going to be the authority under him. Now, where does everybody else fit? That's what you're asking. Right? Right. Cool. So I'm going to prove that heaven is on earth, and then we're going to go to Revelations 11. All right? <clears throat> this is Revelations 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. So when you read the book of Corinthians, well, I mean, actually, you know, I'm going to get it right now, because I need you to understand who the tabernacles of God are, right? I don't want to skip over that, because that's going to remove some of the context. <clears throat> This is 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So the Israelites, we are literally temples in which God spiritually dwells. Right? So when it says the tabernacle, what is the tabernacle in the Bible when it talked about that in Revelation 2? Remember the tabernacle in the wilderness that God dwelled in before yes. they built the temple? Yeah. So we are likened unto tabernacles. When New Jerusalem is established, that's going to be when Christ is on earth, and the Israelites have been redeemed and given glorified bodies. Because you got to think, how are we going to rule heaven if anybody can just come up and shoot us? Correct. Right. And drop a bomb. That's not going to work anymore. Right? Right. And I'm sure you've heard that the, the chosen of God are going to be given spiritual gifts. They're going to be like Superman, right. right? How they portray heroes and things of that nature in comics. Where do you think they get all that from? Superman, invulnerability and strength. Yeah. Ever hear of Samson? How about the Flash? Ever hear of Elijah outrunning a chariot? Right. All these things are in the Bible, right? Shit, Elijah even summoned a damn storm. That he outran, by the way. You know what I'm saying? But this is 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What know ye not? That your body is the temple of the holy God, which is in you, which ye have of God. And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So that's just to further prove that the Israelites are God's temples. Right? And I want to show you that we're going to judge the world. That's what the, the kingdom of Christ is going to do. Right? Because you see that water down there? It looks like toilet water. You see people spray in the sky all day long look like a fucking tic-tac-toe pattern mm -hmm. there, right that's destroying the earth right so the earth needs judgment to fix that this is first corinthians six and one dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters so this is saying hey look you got a problem as an Israelite, why are you running to the, the, the powers that be rather than going to your own judges, your own elders to adjudicate the matter? And then Paul goes on to say, don't you know that your people are going to judge the earth? That's the authority that we're going to have, right? So let's go back to Revelations 21. Just two. This is Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. 
and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I have a question. God's going to wipe away all tears from their eyes. If that was everybody, do we all need to have our tears wiped away? And if so, why? Because I'm going to tell you, the people on this sign, and not just the people on this sign, because guess what? I only have this sign to highlight the Israelites in this hemisphere. You ever hear of a group of people called the Manik people, M-A-N-I-Q? They're Negritos over in Thailand and in Asia. Big lips, big noses, curly hair, dark skin, called nigger. Treated like shit over there, right? You ever hear of the people called the city people, S-I-D-D-I-S? No? Okay. Same story, right? Black people, big lips, big noses, nappy hair, called nigger, treated like shit. How about the Zanj, Z-A-N-J, on Southeast Africa? Same story. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So everywhere we are, we're treated like the people here treat right. That's why this message, remember in the Bible where it said this, the gospel shall be preached to all the world and then shall the end come? Why do you think you're seeing men like me saying these things? We're satisfying that part of the process. Right. We're real close. So I don't know if you've heard, but men like me are popping up in areas like Germany, Australia, Thailand. <laughs> Philippines. I, shit, I heard some people in the Philippines saying Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. I didn't understand everything they said, but I understood enough to know that they were coming out of the good book and they were spitting some fucking fire. Right. See what I'm saying? So now this gospel is going out to all the earth. So we're seeing the income. That's why you're seeing all these wars breaking out. That's why you're seeing America lose control seemingly overnight. Because if you went back two or three years, nobody would ever step to America like they're stepping to America today. Right. But the Bible says that America's enemies would stand up, or Babylon's enemies, the daughter of Babylon, right? That their enemies would stand up and say, we're strong too. Let the weak stand up and say, we are strong. And that's what you're seeing. Russia's standing up going, hey, we got hypersonic nuclear missiles. China's standing up going, hey, we got hypersonic nuclear missiles. We want Taiwan back. Actually, I forgot to come over, go over one thing with you. Who do you think those people are over in Israel today? While you think about that, I want to let you know something they do. They do something called a mazitza pape, right? And what that is is oral circumcision. You know, a male baby on the eighth day, they circumcise him according to the law, the right. Torah. But the way they do it over there is different. They circumcise the baby and the rabbi sucks the blood with his mouth. Now, that's sick. It's pedophilia. Yeah. But knowing that the Orthodox Jews do that over in Israel today, and they also have the biggest gay parade on the planet in Tel Aviv every year. Now, remember those curses, a few of them that I read? Yep. Are they under those curses? Okay, so, hold up, one, one thing. The descendants of the Israelites. I'm assuming that some of the Jewish people were Israelites. Some of them are, yeah. Okay, so some okay. Um, so then you're just saying that some of them who are called Israelites are not actually Israel. Correct. Okay. Um, one other thing is the Israelites in the New Test um, in the Old Testament had slaves to help them do their work. Correct. What what do you think about that as far as like was Remember that what I read to you that the world was made for our sake? I have a question, right? And I want you to be brutally honest. If you were capable of, you were bulletproof, you were Superman from the comics, you were a Kryptonian, and you had a race of people on the planet who were Kryptonians, and you had a race of people who were like goblin people, the best they could do was build cars, service machines, do labor. Where do they fit at? Who fits on the bottom and who fits on the top? Obviously, right? Kryptonians on top, goblin people on the right, bottom. Yeah. So I have a question. When you look at these people on this sign, they're the fastest, they're the strongest, they're the most inventive, they're the most resilient, they're the best people on the planet. Why are they on the bottom when they deserve to be on the top? I guess that would be a question for you because if they are, in fact, what you say they are, why would they not be on the top? Because they broke God's law. See, it's easy for me to answer that. Gotcha. Because
Because think about it. White man took down all these people at the same time. Keep in mind, y'all didn't have sunscreen when you did that. Y'all also didn't even know how to farm when you came over here. You didn't know how to bathe. You were eating out of the skulls of your ancestors before you came out the caves in 449 AD. Remember the Moors? Ever hear of them? They taught the so-called white European, because Europe was originally ruled by black people too. I got plenty of books over here if you need proof. Right, yeah, you know, I believe you. So, if these people who came out of the cave with, without a pot to piss in, were able not only to push back and displace the most entrenched peoples on the planet, but also take them over, take over their kingdoms, come across the ocean, enslave the people that they took over, and enslave the people that they encroached upon as aliens in their own land. And they did all that without knowing how to farm, without having stable families, with knowing nothing about medicine, architecture, all these different things. Wouldn't you say God had to do that for them? Yes, I would. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, if God did that for them, then it is fair to say mm -hmm. that they didn't do it of their own accord, in which case, how can you blame them for doing something God made them do? Who said I blamed anybody? No, it's not really about that. It's just as far as what you're saying, they're clearly not in God's will. Well, they, yes, they are. Perfectly. How's the kingdom of heaven going to be built? With their hands, right? As slaves. No. As, as what I just said in Isaiah 60, that's exactly how the kingdom of heaven is going to be built. I read it to you. I'll read it again. I'll okay, read it okay, again. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because you ever hear, for t uh, hear of tit for tat? Quid pro quo? You do something for me, I do something for you. Who built America? The blacks and Hispanics made it. As slaves. Okay. Who's going to build the kingdom of heaven? What, exactly. What, uh, well, okay. Exactly. Th there's, a, there's, a, there's a difference here because the kingdom of heaven is so much bigger than America, and America yes. is just one country. Yes. Okay. On this earth. That's an excellent so point. Why are hold you comparing America to. Who built Canada? I have no idea. The native uh, Indians who got enslaved there. Okay. Who built Mexico after the Spaniards took it? The Mexican people did. Okay. Who built Argentina after they had programs to kill most of the native Argentinians? The Argentinians did as slaves. How about Brazil, Ecuador, U uh, Uganda, or, uh, Uruguay, Paraguay? Okay. I could go down the list. El Salvador, Bolivia, Guatemala. Okay. You're seeing what I'm saying. We right. built all these nations. Okay. Who built Europe? And before you answer, I'm going to read something to you. And this is to my camera. This is the history they don't teach you in school. Because if they taught you this history in school, most of the people who are teaching you, which are usually white people, they'd be ashamed. Because how are you going to teach history and say we all contributed, but then you have to double back and go everywhere we went, we enslaved the people who were there and they built the forts. Right. So this is from a book called The Memoirs of the Secret Services of John Mackey during the reign of uh, King William, Queen Anne, and King George I, published from his original manuscript as attested by his son, Spring Mackey. Right? He was, a, he was basically a spy. Right? And he was writing about the countenance and the name and the actual place of our position of business everybody was in. So if you were the king, he wrote a profile on you. If you were a duke, he wrote a profile on you, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right? This is from Daniel, Earl of Nottingham, Secretary of State, his eldest son to Mr. Finch, Lord Chancellor in the reign of King Charles II. This gentleman never made any considerable figure till the revolution when he zealously opposed King William's coming to the throne, yet was made Secretary of State by that prince to oblige the church, of which he sets up for a mighty champion. Fast forwarding to the last paragraph so you know how he looks. He also hath the exterior air of business and application enough to make him very capable, and his habit and manners very formal, a tall, thin, very black man, like a Spaniard or a Jew, about 50 years old. So you had three things just be divulged there. You got his likeness, but you also have the likeness of the Spaniards at the time and the Jews. Everybody knew that real Spaniards and Portuguese people look like me or Darwin. They also knew that the average Jew looked like me. Right. 
because Jews are from the Southern Kingdom. That would be your so-called black men, West Indians, or your Haitians. They all look Negro. Right. Right? So, once upon a time, it was no secret who the real Jews were. So much so, you can look at the uh, a map called Negro Land. Negro Land map. And you can see on that map, literally, where it's called Ghana and Togo today, or Benin, it was called the Kingdom of Judah. Right? The Dutch called it the Kingdom of Fida, or F-I-D-A. The French called it the Kingdom of Wida. I believe it's what? It's like O-U-I-D-A-H. And then you have the Portuguese say Wida, W-H-Y-D-A-H. But you get my point. Right. Everybody knew we were the Kingdom of Judah. They also knew over in the Congo, they called it the Kingdom of the Jews. It was no secret we were the real Jews. Just like it's no secret outside of America today. I've had people from Africa, whether it be Uganda, Nigeria, etc., Ethiopia, I'll ask them, who are the real Jews? And they go, well, you are. We're the last ones to wake up. Why? Because that's according to the prophecies of the Bible. In the end time, we were supposed to wake up and learn about ourselves. Right? I also want to read another book to you. And I want to show you a few pictures. Who's that man right there? That's King James. Look like a black man, don't he? Well, if you got your doubts, who's that? I have no idea. That's his grandson, Charles II, nicknamed Black Boy. Hmm. We're the kings of Europe. See what I'm saying? It's not a secret. You're right. And there's also something called iconoclasm. Remember uh, painters like Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo? The Ninja Turtles, basically, right? They were called Renaissance painters. What does the word Renaissance mean? means rebirth. So I have a question. If your people were always in charge of Europe, why did why do you need to be reborn? Right. See how it don't make any sense? Right. That's why they were painting. They were painting over paintings. Market. Right? That's why when you look at heraldry from all over Europe, Coburg heraldry, the heraldry of Italy and Sardinia and Corsica, you see black people, the Moors. Right? What was it called that I saw today? Oh, shit. It's like Slovia Luka. It's in Slovenia. Black faces all over Slovenia. Areas of the world, you would, we would assume it was just black, I'm sorry, a blonde hair, blue eyed people. You would assume that black man had never been over here. But our faces are on all the heraldry, still on some of the buildings. Augustus the Strong, a king in Poland. It's my people. See what I'm saying? Now, what's God going to do to the people who killed all these people? And stole their heritage, stole their likeness, and refused to let up on them and have mercy? That's, I guess, what I'm asking you. Okay. So let's see. Right? I'm going to start with the words of Christ. All right? I'm going to read a few things from the words of Christ. This is Revelation 2 and 9. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. So these are the words of Christ. And he's saying, I know your works, all the shit you go through, all the slavery you're going through. I know your tribulation, all the suffering, all the hardship, and your poverty. How poor you are, how you're scrounging for every nickel that you rub together just to hand back to your oppressor. He knows. But he also knows of the filthy lie, the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. So I ask my question again. Who are those people over in Israel today? They're the people saying that they're Jews. They're not. Right. And if you know their history, there's been two major conversions in history to Judaism. Actually, three if you count the book of Esther. Right? Because uh, are you familiar with Esther, Haman, and Mordecai? Okay, bit. Well, you know at the end, Haman got hanged with all yep. the sons. And then uh, the Israelites were given um, a decree by the king to go and defend themselves. Right. Right? And they called that a uh, holiday Purim. Right. Right? But as a result of the Israelites coming for everybody, everybody started trying to say, oh, I'm, I'm a Jew too, I'm, you know, Judaized, right. basically. But it also happened when, the, uh, when our people cast off the yoke of oppression from the Greeks. That's why you had the, the uh, have you ever heard of the Maccabean Revolt or the Hasmonean Dynasty? I have, but I don't know much about it. It was uh, circa 150, um, yeah, 150 BC under John Hyrcanus forced the Edomites to convert to Judaism because he thought if 
I force them to keep the laws, they'll be civilized. Right. What happened to our people about maybe about 150 years later? The Romans took them over. Right. Right. Okay. Y'all got yeah. time for the Bible today? Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Right. I'll be blessed. Dude. Are you from Africa, brother? Yes, I'm Where from, are you from? Me, I'm from West Africa. You're an Israelite. You know that better than me. How? Aren't, aren't the West Africans kin to the Negroes here in America? Y'all are cousins. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. We're the Israelites of the Bible, brother. You didn't know that? I'm glad you know it. I know it. Okay. Well, That's keep the laws, wants. brother. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> you see, I told you. I told you. They know about it. We're the last ones to figure it out here in America. Because the white man did a really good job of beating that history out of us. When you watch movies like Roots and Armistad, how our people strung up and getting whipped and beaten, our women being raped, our babies being stomped out, us being traumatized, everything taken from us, that did a really good job. That's why y'all got to get that back. See, when you ask me, do I hate the heathen, I think that's kind of a loaded question. Because the more I learn about history, the more reason I have to hate my enemies. Right. Wouldn't you hate the people who raped and robbed your ancestors and continue to do so to the present? No, because of the... Like, to me, I don't know this person. If this person I knew, then fine. But, like, this person is just unknown to me. I have a question. Why wouldn't you get in a lion, a lion's den? I wouldn't get in a lion's den because of the potential of being torn to pieces by right. a lion. Right. Right. Who's killed more black, Hispanic, and Native American people than anything else on the planet? Who are what? I'll even let you open up the, the, the eligibility to animals and disease. Who's been responsible for more death of my people than anything on the planet? I'd have to look at statistics because I don't know all of the, especially with animals and disease, I'm, I'm not sure what the numbers okay. are. So I'm going to give you a number for North America and South America. Okay. 250 million blacks, Hispanics, and natives have to die for this all to exist here. Okay. Now. How many whites, though? Well, but who killed them? Who killed, who killed the whites? Not us, because we weren't in charge. Okay. And I have a question. If you died in the middle of robbing a liquor store, whose fault is it? It's your fault. So if you died in the middle of trying to oppress my people, whose fault is it? Right. Exactly. Okay, so now, say currently, because I mean, obviously right now we don't have people still being slaves picking cotton, right? So say current day, if you have some black men who are, what, carjacking somebody, say, and they die doing that, whose fault is that? Oh, it's their fault. Okay, so but also, don't you think that there's a lot? No, 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 no. But you're you're skipping a lot. That in you're the... skipping a lot because you're skipping okay. to the point where I'm a carjack. How no. does the how does no, no, a no, no, king? No. no, no. I need you to put it in perspective. Okay. Because when I say we were the rulers of all these different lands, you're still thinking of Leroy from the corner store. Once upon okay. a time, John Quavius didn't exist. Leroy didn't exist. You people made niggers. You okay. don't get to jump to the point where I'm a nigger. That's okay. what I'm trying to get you to see. And it didn't take a year or two. It if, took centuries. If somebody ended up as that, mm -hmm. then what are you saying? They are no longer Israelites? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is they're going to pay for their crimes. That's what I'm saying. And guess what the payment okay. is? It's the curses. And death. A lot of and death, death, yes. Yeah. And guess who dies a lot of the time? We do. Right. But now you're saying that those are part of the statistics. And if that's part of the statistics, obviously there's a reason that they died. It's not just because they're black. No, yes. I, I, I agree with you a whole lot. Okay, so then statistics don't matter, I guess. No, point. no, they do. Because here's the thing. Just because we transgress God's laws and paid for it doesn't right. let you off the hook for hanging us, gotcha. lynching us, raping us. I see. <clears throat> so even though... In this case, it would be more just, I guess, as far as the laws go, mm -hmm. that this person died doing something they were not supposed to. That still is put on the person who killed them. So, I see where you're going, but you need to understand, when have your people ever paid for the crimes that happened here? What? 
anyone who, say if somebody's robbing a bank, no matter who they are, they pay for the crime. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the death of 250 million people. George Washington, for instance, he had 80 slaves. His wife had 200. Okay. Most people don't know that. His wife had more slaves than he did. Yeah. How about Abraham Lincoln, who was responsible for the largest massacre single-handedly of a government official in history? 34 natives were hanged all at once. Okay. How about people like King Leopold o over the continent of Africa, responsible for the death of 2 million of my people? So you're saying that that person, these people that didn't die, I guess, are, like, how does that translate to now somebody who is unaware of the situation or otherwise can't do anything about that? I'm glad you asked. Did you know you how are, are your ancestors? Fault for it? Did you know you are your ancestors in God's eyes? I'm not. So what I'm going to break down to you, if you'll receive it, is how death works. Okay. Because when you die, you don't just sit in a weight room waiting for heaven. Right. Right? You ever feel deja vu? You walk into a room, you go, damn, I've been here before. Yeah. Yeah, happens to everybody, right? Right. So I'm going to bring something out to you in Habakkuk. I'm going to come back to it, though, because I need you to understand how death works. So we're on the same page. Right. It's going to be a second Ezra's chapter. And this is to my camera. In these last days, the understanding of this book is going to become plain to everyone. Y'all are going to start to understand who we are and who you are and how God sees everything. Right. And when that happens, the white man is going to go crazy. He's going to try to bring back slavery. He's going to try to... You're, the RFID microchip. How did I forget? Are you aware that they're trying to have people put that in their hand and in their forehead? Not really. I, I think I heard something about it. But... Okay. Well, it's becoming increasingly more popular. World, uh, are they actually it? doing it actively? Yes, huh. yes, yes they are. It's happening more so at the corporate level, and it started over in countries like Sweden, huh. right? It was a matter of convenience, but now, according to the World Economic Forum, they're saying it's going to be compulsory, right? Because your vaccine record's going to be on it. That's what they're going to really ah, get it in with, you know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. threat of a disease. Gotcha. But not only are your vaccine records going to be on it, but your social security number is going to be on it, your banking details are going to be on it, all your medical information is going to be on it. And they're going to have your payment information on it. So right. if you don't have the mark, you can't get paid. If you can't get paid, you can't work. Right, exactly. That's why the Bible says if you don't take the mark, you won't be able to buy and sell. Right, exactly. Right? But let's get on the same page real quick. This is 2nd Ezra, chapter 14. Ah, shit. Please don't rip. In verse 34. Therefore, if so, or therefore, if so be, that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. So after you die, your spirit departs, goes back to the Father, to the Most High God, you get your judgment for the things done in that life, and then you rest. How do I know that you rest? Let's go to Job. Remember Job was lamenting that he wished he had never been born? Why do you think that was? Just... I mean, he had a lot of... Uh, what? Diseases and ailments. He lost everything. Yeah. Right? But if he weren't born, where would he be at? According to what you just heard. If your spirit goes back to the Father a judgment then you rest well then if you're not born where's your spirit at still resting okay so he said it would have been better for me not to be born and still be in paradise remember christ okay and the, the, the thief right. who was next to him said you know he basically yes. was advocating for christ and right. christ said well you'll be with me today in paradise right that's what he meant he didn't mean he was going to heaven gotcha he was saying you're going to the same place i'm going we're going to get our judgment and then we both going to rest right this is Job, chapter 3, and you know what? Verse 11. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breasts that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet and should have slept. Then had I been at rest. So when he said I should have slept, that's a Hebrew phraseology for I should have been dead. Right? I should right. have slept and just been at rest. Right? with kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, 
who filled their houses with silver or as an untime or a hidden untimely birth. I had not been as infants which never saw light. So he's essentially saying, I didn't Got time for the Bible? A few minutes? Okay. Well, before you go, do you know what tribe you go back to in the Bible? I don't know how to do things about Do you? Okay. What type of debates do you have? You think everybody can be saved? Are they? You have faith. Faith in what? God. In God? Okay. You have faith in God and you're saved. So what's the mission of Christ? Christ. Christ. Was the name given to the campaign that Jehovah came down here on earth. The flesh. The word became flesh. That was Jesus Christ. Okay. There was no son. Uh, yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. Because what about when you read Colossians, when it calls him basically... Is it? Yeah. So where, where's Jehovah's name in Genesis 1? No, it's not. The word for God there is Elohim, and it's plural. It means divine ones, rulers, or judges. So who are those judges who created the earth and everything that we see? According to Hebrews 1, that would be Christ and the angels. You have debates on this? Right. I understand what you're saying. The word is Christ. But but, no. but he's no, not God. Word is God. But he's not the most high. The word is God. So when he said, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Who was he talking to? Himself? I know, I know but that man, man, trying to make it look like he's weak. Jesus Christ is not a weak man. He was, he was a man, God. Right? Okay. So we're going to read the, the mission of Christ. Right? This is Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So that horn of salvation, that's for being saved, right? And on top of that. No, no, but hold on, 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 hold on. If that horn of salvation is for us in the house of David, if that Israelite. Okay, brother. You all right, brother? Yeah, long as you're all right, man. Yeah, yeah, long as you're all right, brother. But I'm going to read it again for you. This is Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, the God of the Israelites, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. His people are the Israelites. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. What's the Gentiles do? Right. As he spake. Well, I mean, yeah, he's, uh, he's only the God of the Jews. If you read Amos 3 and 2, it says that he's only the God of Jacob. So, so let's go on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from, from our enemies, Salak, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. So I have a question. The whole mission of Christ is to save the Israelites out of the hands of their enemies. That's salvation. So where does salvation apply to the people who have the Israelites in their hands? They're the aggressors. So how's Christ going to save them? So are the Gentiles going to be uh, equal to the Israelites in the kingdom? Here, man, you gotta break up these misunderstandings because because if you think Christ is coming to save the same people who've been raping, robbing, and murdering God's children, you're mistaken, brother. But this is Ephesians. Oh, Paul was doing that. Paul was only going to the Israel. Paul was Paul was persecuting. And then he turned around. He started proselytizing. But yes, he did. He sent him. No, he sent him unto the same Gentiles that are Israelites who don't know they're Israelites. And I'm approving. Right? But this is a
Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the uncircumcision in the flesh made by hands. So this is talking about literally the Israelites who were called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. This is Acts 11 and 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto, not, unto life. So you're saying this is for everybody, right? According, if you stop there, it means that. But let's keep going. Verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen tra traveled as far as Phineas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. So why would they then go and preach the word to the Jews only? Because the Jews were the Gentiles. Are you talking about the apostles? Yeah. This is in Acts 2. This well, is after Christ. The apostles were, the apostles were, were preaching to the Jews. Because they were Jews. Paul was a Jew. Yeah. No, from the God, tribe of Benjamin. God, God, right. God told him that he, his mission was to preach to the Gentiles. Yes. And, which, and, was, which was other than the Jews. No, no. But, but here's the thing. That's not true. That's yeah. not true at all. That's not true at all. Because it literally just says... That the repentance was granted to the Gentiles, and then they go and preach to the Jews only. That makes no sense unless you go back to Acts 2 and you see that there were devout Jews dwelling in all lands so what was that? under heaven. Huh? What was Acts? What was Acts? Acts. That, well, the Acts of various apostles. No, the, the, the Acts of the works of the apostles. Yeah. Healing, proselytizing, spreading the gospel to the Israelites. All, all, the, miracles, all, the, miracles, all the miracles were intended for. For the Israelites. That's right. All of them. Yeah, so where, where did they hear They were looking for signs. Even, even, uh, even talking in tongues was, was only for, was only for the, for the uh, non-believers. Not the believers. Even the Jews. So, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm actually about to talk about that right now. This is Acts 2 and 5. Actually, let's start up at, let's start at 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So, Rome, Italy, or Rome is in here, right? right? But you had Asia, you had all of, all these other lands. There were Jews developing, or dwelling in those lands, yeah. devout Jews. Those were the ones that this was for. Oh, like I said, the tongue, the, the tongue, again, that's another misconception. Because they, they, you know, they tell you that you're going to speak in tongues, and, and that means the Holy Spirit is upon you. It's not true. It says in there in the Bible. Paul, as we said, that Paul was not. You're talking about, uh, I think, uh, First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians, uh, 14, I believe, where he talks about if you speak in tongues, you need an interpreter. You need an interpreter. Well, no, no, you need an interpreter, somebody to tell you what's being no, no, said. Exactly, because they're supposed to be known language. Yeah, known language. And some of that had to do with, with, uh, with the, uh, what he calls the Tower of Babel. That's what God, when the Tower of Babel got to do something, and they decided that, no, we're going to go here, we're going to make a statue. God said, nobody talks, nobody can understand anybody else. Do you know, actually, the reason why God confused the language is because he didn't want all the nations to be together. Well, that's, the nations were together, but at that point, they, were, they wanted to stay there and not do what God wanted. So God confused everybody. Everybody stopped building and they hit the road, and that's when the nations began. Oh, one second, one second, one second. I'm, I'm a so it's, like, it's, not, it's hard to, it's hard to deal with it, but you know,
That's not true. Because during that time, remember in Daniel 4, when Christ stood up in the synagogue and he read from the book of Isaiah, what would you call that? Well, it's called the Bible. Well, you want to call it right. a Bible, but you know, I don't know. It's like Abraham. Abraham, what? You know, Abraham was tested by God, right? To kill his son. Now, like, to me, to me. You're talking about Isaac. Like, okay, no, Isaac. I'm talking about Isaac. But to me, it's like this. God. Just had to ask because you said uh, you said like it. No, but Abraham and Sadi was a original name for Abraham. But I want to read this, right? Okay. This is Luke chapter 4 and verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal up the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Where did he get that from? Paul? No, no, that's Christ. Right? When he stood up in the synagogue to read. That was from Isaiah 61. Well, you can read that exact statement in Isaiah 61. So the Bible did, in fact, exist at that time. It was only the Old Testament. All, what all Bible means is collection of books. Biblios, collection of books. But this is Genesis 11 and 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Yeah, so that's why God scattered them from the Tower of Man, because we're not supposed to be united with the Hindu. Well, and again, there's, when you read it, it's kind of funny because it kind of tells you, like, they're together. They can do anything. I don't want them to do anything. Correct. I don't want them to do anything. I want them to yeah. So my question is, how are the Gentiles going to be saved? God don't even want us to be together. Well, he didn't want them to be together at the time. It's just like the Masonic law. The Masonic law, when God came down here and took, and, and, and took away the Messiah, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Ten Commandments and all that, that was supposed to be a temporary thing for the Jewish people. 
have a question. Why did Christ tell us to keep the law? Well, again, the law, he says that the law doesn't apply to you. When? Read on, bro. Okay. No, I mean, it says, it says that it says that the law, the law, you can live by the law, and you're going to fail, and you're going to have, you know, you're going to you're going to go through a lot of shit dealing with it. Yeah, you'll get judged or, as an Israelite. Or yeah. you can have, because you know what happened? God said this. He came to a conclusion, uh, uh, actually Paul was saying this. Paul said, he came to a conclusion and said, man is sinful and cannot save himself. Man is sinful and cannot save himself. Okay. So God said, when I had, when he had on the cross, God said, it's a finished problem. You don't have to do anything to be saved. All you got to do is look at me. Believe in me. Believe in me. It's like, it's like when Moses was in the desert, God told him to build a, to build a, a brass snake. And it says, uh, the people are hurt, they're dying, they're, they're injured, they're bitten by animals, whatever. Uh, and God, and uh, God told him, uh, Moses, build, make a snake, fabricate a snake, a brass snake, and wrap it around the cross. And put it up and tell them, if they look at it, they'll be here. But if you have faith in God and look at that thing, do you know why it said that in John 3? John 3? You're talking about John 3 and 14. Right. Talking about the brass serpent being raised up in the wilderness. Right. It was raised up for the Israelites. Right. And that was, but that was to juxtapose the reason why Christ was being raised up. For the world of Israel and no one else. Well, <coughs> God, according to what I read, God told me to do it so the people would be healed. Correct. They were, they were running around in the desert. But who were the people that were being healed? The people that, the old generation... Of, of Jews that came out of Egypt and still wanted to be saved. Israelites. Correct. The wicked Israelites who were repenting. Well, they weren't wicked, but they, they, didn't, want, they didn't want to change their way of thinking. No, no, no. And, they, and preferred, that, they preferred to be back to slaves than to be wandering around the desert with God. God, God said, no, you're going, to, you're going to wander around be all die, and then maybe I'll have a chance with your next generation. Yeah, yeah. Everybody under the age of 20, except for Caleb and, and uh, Joshua. Right. Yeah. Wow. But here's the thing, right? When it talks about uh, Paul talking about keeping the law. I'm trying to see where he says through faith we establish the law. Hold on one second. Well, there, it, it's very confusing because in some places it says that faith without action, without works action, okay. works, about without work, is nothing. But then it says, it says that man is sinful and man cannot save himself. So with, with that statement alone, what can you do to be saved? Well, nothing. You're sinful and you can't save yourself. So God said, I'm going to give you righteousness. I give it to you as a gift. You are now righteous, just like I gave it to Abraham. He told Abraham, you're righteous, because you believe in me, because I say so. I mean, it's all, it's all about God. No, it is. It is. It's all about God. But, God. Here's, but here's the thing. We're supposed to be keeping the law. The law? No. At no point were we told not to keep the law. Well, if you got to go, man, have a good one, brother. you got to find it. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? They took it away. So I'm going to read this to you, right? Yeah, I got to go to you. Okay, well, I'm going to read this one last time. Yeah, but I appreciate talking about it because you know what? We need to talk about it. We do. You're right, Elf. No, You're we, definitely right. We, we, we need to talk about this stuff because, man, people don't even know nothing about it. Nothing. Correct. You are correct. I mean, I, I, I'm doing a bunch of stuff that I've, I've read like four and a half months ago. I never read the Bible before. But I've never read the Bible. I opened it up for four and a half months. And, you know, I, I've read a lot of stuff. Well, you seem to know a little bit, you know, of a lot. We're only reading for four or five months. A little bit. I want to read another book of books that what happens when you read another book is that, again, you're getting the input from the author. You know what I mean? I, I get you. Commentary and stuff like that. Are you or not? So, you know what I mean? Because everybody that writes something for that wants to interpret Change. It's a different well, point of view. Yeah, yeah. Different point of view. I know. They all, they all have a different point of view. Uh, 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 look at a guy like you're like, what's that? 
These are the words approved of God, written by man, that he inspired, right? Well, that's what it's for. Y'all got time for five a couple minutes? Y'all black, Hispanic, or Native Indian, just know y'all Israelites, guys, all right? Guys, you gotta listen for a little bit. What do you like to do in your spare time, though? Yeah, do you like to work on cars? I, I know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me say something. Let me say this. The reason why you work on everything is because you're Issachar, he who is hired. That's why I asked that question. Because my Mexican brothers and sisters, when I find out what you like to do for fun, you like to work for fun. Fixing cars, fixing houses, for fun. We view that as jobs. You view that as fun. That's how I know you're Issachar, right? But I want to show you this. This is 2nd Ezra, 6 and 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. Of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this I spoke before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes, the Israelites. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto, likened unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that fallen from a vessel. God will care about the people. Well, you really want to be an Israelite? Well, you know, I tell you, and I can go back and forth, and I can go all the way back up to the one more time. Uh, Cain. Yeah, I mean, Cain killed Abel. Yeah, I 
field able though. somebody has where you look at them and you go, damn, there's something different. Walking around. White people. They're from the nation of Esau. Remember when Esau was born, he was red all over like a hairy garment? Who are the people whose blood shows forth through their skin? They blush or they get sunburned. That's who Cain is spiritually. Now, didn't, you said Cain killed his brother, right? Didn't Esau want to kill his brother because of the blessing? Esau? He wanted to kill Jacob because of the blessing. Ain't that the same spirit of Cain? Yeah, it is. My memory starts just going off. Yeah, but let me read this one thing, because I want you to know this before you go. This is 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It's an Israelite. Look up the Hebrew Israelites on YouTube. Start learning, Elder. We're everywhere. And if you can't find one, come back here next Saturday. I'll be here. I'm here every Saturday. I've been here for about three years. Uh, I'm back. I appreciate it. God's name before you go is Yahweh. 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 And his son's name isn't Jesus. The letter J is only 500 years old. It's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh and Yahweh yeah, Shai. Well, they use a different name. In Yahweh there. and Yahshua is what you hear. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. But Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, because his name is dreadful to the heathen. But, but That's like why you never heard like of it. Like I said, to me, there was no son and there is no Holy Spirit. Just, just, just research a little bit more, Elder. Research a little bit more. Just God, God. You know, in the beginning, in the, in the beginning, Adam actually, actually, he was the one that made the apple. And you know what? Was, was that Satan? We would have to have a whole other conversation on that, no, Elder, because no, no. well, it, it gets that's deep. That's in the beginning, but mm -hmm. God, God actually tells us things like this. But does it mean it was a snake though? No, it wasn't a snake. It was a serpent. But but the thing is though, when they ate from the tree, was it actually fruit? 
Elder, could you come back next Saturday? Because I really want to talk to you about that. Now, what if I told you those trees are different nations yeah. in the garden? That's why he threw them out the garden and put the sword. What does that mean? You know what I mean? You have to, have to think about it. First of all, he says, you can do anything and eat anything and everything. I can answer that for you if you have time, Elder. Know, but then it says, Damn. <laughs> why are you going to, what, what, not why, what, what are they going to eat from the field? They going to eat from the field? Saturday, I, I want to go into that all with you. But before you go, I'm going to read this while you're leaving. This is Colossians 1, and you know what? We'll start at 15. Who is the R? Actually, we got to start at 12. Giving thanks to the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from the powers of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear sons. Let's talk about Christ. And whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So he was born of God. God and Christ are separate. He's the only begotten of the Father. they talk about when it says that Adam was made in the image of God. Can I blow your mind real quick? It's in Luke 3 and 38. Did you know it says that Adam is Christ? Is Christ? I'm going to That's what I'm saying. Come back next week. I will be here. Okay. <laughs> it, says, it says that God made man. He did. He did. He did. Now, what are you talking about? God is a spirit. What do you mean? God is a spirit. No, no, no. He has an image? No, he doesn't. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. What it is is that he gave, he gave, he gave Adam some of his attributes. So, 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 hold on, hold on. Before you go, before you go, because I want to knock that out. God does have an appearance. This is Revelation chapter 4 and verse 2. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. That's God, right? And he that, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Do you know what a jasper and a sardine stone looks like? You know, when you, you go out in the sun, you get really dark. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know God looks just like that? Right. That's, that's, that's the, uh, the, uh, the veil they find. When they had all these veils. Now, that was Moses because his face was glowing. No. So they put that veil over his face. No, when God, when you get there, God. When I was gone, you get there in the face. You get there in the face. You get there in the face. Hold on. But let, let, me, let, me, let me show this. All right? So God actually has a color. So these are going to be jasper stones. That's the color of the jasper. So the Most High God, His color is like unto a jasper stone. If you read the Book of Ezekiel and the Book of Daniel, He talks about the Most High God and how He looks. He has hair like wool. It's all white, and He has skin like burnt brass or jasper. So God is essentially black. It's in the Bible. That's why Jesus Christ is described. And Daniel, I believe Daniel 10 or Daniel 9. But either way, it's just, he's described in Revelation 1 and 14 as having the skin of firm brass, hair like lamb's wool that's all white, and a voice of many waters. Well, you're talking about the eyes on the chariots in Ezekiel 1. But those eyes are just windows and lights. Because if you saw a plane up in the sky with a bunch of lights on it, you would, you would call those windows. But back in those days, they called them eyes. But... I would love to talk to you more about it. If you got time, I love it, Elder. I love it. But God bless you. All right, be safe. God bless you too, brother. All praises to the most high. Stay strong. You too, you too. All praises, all praises. All right, how much time do you do? today. All right. Y'all, I'm going to be honest. 
man, I don't know, I'm kind of stumped. I don't know whether to go into my lesson. Yeah, I might just call it today, man. You know? He says, man, it's, it's, it's been an up and down camp right now. <laughs> you got one brother who leaves, but when one brother leaves, the Most High God sends more. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? We're going to spend the next hour doing what we said we were going to do. We're going to start bringing out some of our lessons. On, brother, you got it. You're a king walking the earth, brother. You're an Israelite. That's why you faster than everybody else. You're stronger than everybody else. You guys chosen, brother. I'll pray. But we're going to start by going. You know what? Damn. It is a non sequitur. You know what? I think I'm going to do a sit down lesson. We're going to go ahead and call y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off and say Shalom, call Halal Yahab Hashem Yahweh Shai. This is Haya El signing off. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babal. Right? All praises, all praises, all praises. Yeah, buddy.